Yeah, on that whole David and Jonathan bit. One of the key verses they like to in, emphasize is the verse where it says that when David, when it says that that, that um, the love that David and Jonathan had was more than the love of woman. And they infer from that there must have been a homosexual relationship between David and Jonathan because it said that their love was more than the love of woman. And what they don't understand is the Hebraic idiom. They think that means homosexual. You understand that they think that that means that they were were gay because the love that Jonathan and David had was it, it excelled or superseded. It was more. Basically, what it means in simple English is more than the love of woman, right? Now, what's interesting about it is that. The homosexual agenda is very, it's very intellectual and very informed because you know they come from all sort of people, so they're out there, they're out there basically, you know, looking for some, I guess, some justification, some sort of moral justification in, in some sense. They're looking for some sort of moral justification in some sense to basically say that hey it's all right the bible is contradicting itself because look jonathan and david were gay because their love the love they had one for the other was more than the love of woman and they are misinterpreting the hebrew idiom that this means that they the love they had was like the love that a man has for a woman no there, there's a big difference there See, what you have to understand is the context of the Hebrew and the ancient ancient peoples and ancient cultures is that a man, and we're saying not just a real man, but a man in those communities and societies, in our ancient communities and society, their love for their wife was a special love. It wasn't like nowadays everything is is viewed really as sexual, you know, in the sense sex becomes like a, a kind of a, this taboo kind of a thing that everybody want to talk about and deal with, but we can't deal with in proper society. So there's this, there's this uh, schizophrenic personality that develops around sex. That if Jonathan and, G and David wanted to be gay, they could have been gay, and if that was so, it would be basically... Mm, it would be basically put out in the scripture. It could be there because there's a lot of other things that are in the scriptures if you look at it. There's where a lot of other things that are in the scriptures. You know, good, bad. We can show you oral sex in the scripture. There's anal. You understand that as well. Now, we won't show these things. Oh, well, I want to see where it's such and such. If you understand the language and the idiom and the speak of the language, you basically can understand what they are talking about. And that verse right there where they try to say that the love of Jonathan and David excelled the love of woman, you have to understand what sort of love did they have of woman. Was it just a sexual way? No. It was a protective way where, for example, when a man had a wife, a woman, right, the woman was part of the propagation of his, of his in the net, his, his, as well as his, immortality where he would have children from this woman and the children are part of his wealth it was a different economic system if you understand now this is where people say oh woman now that becomes the next level now maybe some sisters may ask about the sexism in the bible and a lot of these things are perceived in the scripture but are not proven by the actual text of the scripture for one to now stretch out that David and Jonathan were homosexual because they their love was more than the love of women that the love that they had for each other was more than the love that a man would have for a woman it was a more than a love that a person would have for a child but this person was dear and near to you as a man's wife was near and dear to him. In ancient societies, they just didn't run around hating their woman and hating their wife. Their wife was a, was a part of their family, was like the mesesso, the center post in their house. And you can look in that and see a sexual metaphor if you want to, but then you're missing, 
you're missing the harticle point of it. There's a harticle point. It's like when we as brethren, I love this brethren. I have love of certain brethren more than the love of women in general. I have love of certain brethren. And me and those brethren have never engaged in any homosexual activities. You see what I'm saying? So people say, well, how can that be? Remember, it's using the word woman. You see what I'm saying? It's using the word woman in a general sense because men love women. Now, when a man loves a man more than the love of woman, what does it mean in the Hebrew? Or better yet, make, make me say it so you can understand it. What does it mean in black people's way of talking? Because you won't understand the Bible if you don't look at the Bible as a black book. And this is why the Bible has so been so mis construed because they want to look at it like it's part of their history and heritage as white folks and it's really not. It speaks about them here and there but it's really not about white people. In fact it speaks about them more towards the later part of the book like in the judgments than it really does in the earlier part of the books. When we speak about the serpent and everything we're going beyond, we're on a metaphysical level, we're on a spiritual level. It's beyond black and white. In fact in the early parts of the book it was black. You understand? So it was even a higher level of spirituality for one to detect a, a nachash, uh, a reptilian. You had to look at nature. People were wise. And, but in a black idiom, if I say that this brethren, my love for this brethren is more than the love of, I have more, more love for this brethren than the love of Gal. What does that mean? In a black idiom, does it mean me and the man we bugger in or something like that? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It basically means I would not betray this nigga for pussy. I'm not gonna pussy can't come between me and this nigga. You understand? Me and this nigga are not some down low homosexuals. Me and this nigga are close. There is a brotherly. This is the true height of. When the mama chinet fikr or brotherly love. See, a lot of niggas be saying, yeah, man, that's my homie, that's my brethren. Some pussy come along, he kill that brother for him. You see what I'm saying? The pussy come along, the woman come along, he's willing to kill the other brother who he talked about, this is my ace boon coon. <laughs> coon, right? You know, yet he would kill that brother. If a piece of tail, a piece of ass, some woman, not have to be his wife, just some chick. Some chick he's so-called banging on the so-called side or a nearby village or in the same village or whatever. Whoever that nigga is, still, you now set your eye on the same female and you're willing to kill that one you, who you call your brother. So, therefore, your love, the love that you had of your brethren, didn't exceed the love of women, of chicks, of bitches, of skirt of tail you could go on with the metaphor this is one reason why the world is so messed up because ones and ones want to go out there and try to perpetrate some um some lie i mean it's really almost it's, it's, it's near it's near um a blasphemy you know saying that jonathan and david were homosexual because there's a very unique idiom which is um which is a style of you could say a very unique idiom which is a style of um a style of speech which is actually um used for example if you go over some of the verses and these are some verses where they really try to strain the, strain the eye like at a gnat, you know, while they're swallowing a camel is a good expression to those um, um, homosexual uh, readers, the ones who read it from a homosexual point of view, in a sense. There's something wrong with their spirituality because what they are confusing is a gender thing with a spiritual, with a spiritual thing. You see, they're confusing the physical gender, you know, saying the lower chakras with the upper chakras. Is another way of saying this. 40 verses that John said, David, one of them say, And it came to pass in 1 Samuel 18 and 1, it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking to Saul, 
that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Notice what it's saying. The soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And when thinking about doing a short video on the subject matter, because a brethren, one had asked about the Jonathan and David, were they gay? And in working on some of the other projects, we didn't get time to, to work on that. But we thought about it, and so that the adversary would not have occasion to say, look, see, he didn't answer that, therefore it must mean that they are gay. These be religious people, they don't want to deal with rah, 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 rah. You understand? And then there's an important point because of what's happening in society for us to really understand what the Bible really is saying so we can overcome these other issues that Satan has thrown down into our nature because of the disobedience of the black man, Adam. So here...